I've talked about the fact that people are important. And I got an opportunity to go to K2 in 1990. And I, I honestly didn't think I was ready to go to K2. K2 is a big mountain. It's a scary mountain. Uh, perhaps you know that for every four people that summit K2, one dies. Those aren't good odds. Uh, so I was very circumspect about going to this big but beautiful mountain. But the people who wanted to go were the people I wanted to be with. And I went over for the first time to K2 in 1990 uh, because I wanted to be with, it was the group of people that meant the most to me. And uh, this is just a little overview of the route. Uh, we were on the, the Abruzzi Ridge, what you might call the standard route on K2. And the camps are listed here in meters. Camp 2 just above Houses Chimney. The Black Pyramid here is about the steepest part of the mountain up to Camp 3. And then you, the shoulder starts to slowly get uh, lower and lower angle until you approach Camp 4. And I'll talk a lot more about Summit Day later in the evening. Um, just a couple of shots of the climbing here on K2. And in 1990, uh, we were not successful uh, in that we didn't reach the summit. Um, a little view of an avalanche off Broad Peak. and um, It wasn't successful in that we didn't reach the summit. We, we, we got into good position. We had a great trip. And then we had a 23-day storm. It, it literally stormed for 23 days. We didn't leave base camp for 23 days. We didn't take risks, of course, by leaving base camp during that storm. Uh, we ended up leaving the mountain, um, not satisfied with the summit, but satisfied in that we were healthy and happy and better friends than we'd been when we left the United States two months earlier. Uh, um, but I did leave knowing that I wanted to go back to K2 because as I left the mountain, I looked back, uh, the weather began to clear. We were certainly in no shape to go up on that mountain after our 23 days in base camp and without resources and rations and the things that we needed. But I, I had a feeling I'd be back. In the interim, I did some other uh, climbing. And as I said, my career of climbing is filled with its fair share of failures. Um, one of the things that I, I believe strongly is that big problems start with small beginnings. Um, you know, you, when you hear about accidents in the mountains, people, people jump to the conclusion that something significant must have happened to cause that accident. But if you look more closely, you generally find out that there's something small that might have uh, been important and led to that situation early on. I, and on Late Talk 3, uh, which I tried in the early 90s with my friend Greg, I think something similar happened. This is a view from Late Talk 3 of the Ogre, one of my, one of my favorite mountains over in Pakistan. It's only been climbed once. Um, something similar happened, but I think it went the other way. I think good decisions were made on, incremental, on an incremental basis. This is just some of the climbing. On, on, on Late Talk 3, the west face, which is what we were attempting, still has not been ascended to, the, to, to this day. It's about an 8,000 foot uh, rock and ice face. Um, and we made it quite a ways up, maybe three fifths of the way up. There was plenty of climbing yet to do. It would have been days more climbing, in my estimation, at least two. Uh, this is an ice pitch near our high point at about 20,500 feet. Um, but the story here is that uh, at one point, we were trapped by a four-day storm. Uh, and we were, at that point, rather high on the mountain. We'd climbed above this snow field about 300 feet. But our, our tent, our little portal-edge tent or fly, was right there. So you can see we'd come up a long ways, but we had a ways to go. And the weather cleared after this four-day storm. And I said to my partner, Greg, we're in. We've got a couple of days of food. The weather's clearing. It's time to go to the top. And he looked at the weather. Now, this guy's a talented guy, a strong climber, an aggressive climber. 
And uh, he looked up at the weather and he said, you know, you're right, the storm is broken. The, cl the, the, the skies are clear, it's, it's beautiful, but the wind is coming from the same direction. The weather is still coming from the ocean. It's not coming from the continent where the high pressures are. It's still coming from the south. I think we should go down. And I said, are you crazy? It's, this is it. This is the biggest unclimbed face in the Himalaya. This is our chance. This is our moment. And we argued for, we argued for, it, I want to say hours. It was probably an hour, but it was a real argument. And he won. We went down. We began rappelling in beautiful weather. We had to do 54 rappels to get off the peak. Uh, at rappel 30 or so, it started to snow and it snowed for the next nine days. So, you know, I could have won that argument. Uh, I, I'm a pretty good arguer when I decide to be. And uh, if it had gone the other way, we'd probably still be right there. I mean, we did not have the resources to survive that kind of a storm for that long. And we certainly would have had it would have either been impossible or very difficult to get down during it. Uh, so again, it's, it's these small things that have big implications, I think, in the mountains and in life. Um, I spent some time after that uh, back in the United States. One of my other stomping grounds is the Tetons. Uh, this is a, a view of the Cathedral Peaks, uh, Tiwanot, Owen, and the Grand Teton, the high peaks of the Tetons. Um, in 92, uh, a couple of friends of, uh, of mine and I did the first traverse of all of those in one push in the winter. It took us four days. Um, I, the next group that did it took like 12 hours or something. But you know, breaking ground, you know, doing something for the first time takes a little more time. Uh, and, then, and then I went back to K2. And I went back in 1993. Um, and, and as I said earlier, people matter. And the people I went with on this trip were great people, don't get me wrong. But they were not the people that I had been spending my career with, my, my client. They were not my partners. Stacy Allison, who was the first American woman to climb Mount Everest, called me up and said, I want to take a group to K2 and I want you to join the team. And I said, you know, I'm not that interested, Stacy, because I've got my climbing partners, I've got the people I climb with, and I really believe in that. She said, Phil, I have a different view. My view is that what I want to do is put great people together and build a team of great people, and they'll be the right people for the job, but also, in not knowing each other previous, previously, they won't bring any baggage. They won't they won't bring any of their sort of predispositions or their codependencies or any of the negative things that come out of partnerships. She talked me into it, and and it and it it wasn't it wasn't a terrible trip. It it was the only trip on which I faced the kind of tragedy uh, in which a partner dies. Um, part of my own experience there that I regret is that I made a choice based on the objective as opposed to the people. And uh, I, have a different, I have a different relationship with the people that I've climbed with on all my other trips. And I've taken that lesson into my, to my work role. Uh, and, and I certainly taken that lesson into my personal life.